Oh, as you can see, it's full of the stuff from the house because we're moving out of the house. And um, the picture is here. My first collage was done 16 years ago and I photographed lots of broccoli um, and then I cut them out and um, I painted the background first and then I, I layered it with really old fashioned newspaper from a hundred years ago. So this newspaper behind is like a backdrop. Um, then I painted in the big silver moon and with all my cuttings that I've amassed over quite a few years, I've started to collage this one here. I very rarely work on one picture, but I worked on this one, the first one I worked on all by itself, and um, it became the broccoli jungle. And it's, it's a little bit, um, I've been influenced by Monty Python, Salvador Dali, and Hieronymus Bosch. Um, Monty Python was really humorous, so I've added um, two monkeys on the rock getting drunk and a giraffe going into a telephone box. And um, if you look more, you'll see more little things poking out like the dinosaur. Um, this is full of broccolis and broccoli is very good vegetable to eat as well. But it also looks like a tree, which is why I've used it in several places in what I've called the broccoli jungle. It's, it's one of my fastest selling prints now, the broccoli jungle. This was the first step of actually making a broccoli out of a plaster of Paris. And not only did I, I make the plaster of Paris molds and put them all over London and Brick Lane, but then I actually put the, um, the broccoli as a piece of artwork in a frame. And those started selling all over the world as well. And, um, I'd, I'd, when, when the tourists are in London, um, I'd sell between 150 to 200 of framed broccolis. And every week I'd put more broccolis out because people used to come along and take the broccolis off the wall and send me messages saying, we've got one of your broccolis, all excitedly. Um, so I always go around London and Brick Lane. I've changed the name to, from Brick Lane to Broccoli Lane because when I opened my second gallery in Brick Lane, I called it Brick Lane, uh, Broccoli Lane Gallery. And because at the other end of Brick Lane, there's a gallery called Brick Lane, I thought, well, this end, we'll call it Broccoli Lane Gallery. My childhood was um, very bad. Um, my parents got divorced. My father uh, went to America when I was about four years old and he never came back. Um, my mother um, went into um, hospital because she couldn't deal with um, the separation. So my grandmother looked after me until the age of when I was about nine. 
Um, but I didn't, I wasn't very good at school. I was always getting into fights when I was sort of six, seven and eight. Um, because I was very unsettled. And, um, then I end, ended up going to boarding school. Oh, uh, where I was there for about, uh, five or six years. And that was a very violent place. Um, so uh, my, the whole of my education was um, one of um, total disruption. I couldn't concentrate on things. And um, so I didn't really, ac academically, I didn't achieve much. Um, sadly, I would have liked to have had a better education than I did. But, you know, I suppose uh, I survived, which is, um, you know, I felt suicidal many a times in my childhood. And uh, once I took a lot of tablets when I was about 12, I took a lot of tablets uh, hoping to die. And fortunately I didn't. Um, and then I suffered a lot of depression in my time. Um, so it wasn't very easy, no. Gosh, Salvador Dali and Monty Python. Um, Monty Python for the humour, Salvador Dali for the surrealism, and Hieronymus Bosch for the dark side and the humour and the surrealism. So Bosch had everything in his work. And his work was created, uh, I, 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 the main reference of Bosch's work to me is the Garden of Earthly Delights, which is a triptych, and it's in the Prado in Spain. And uh, it's an amazing piece of work, just so much in it. You could stare at it all day and never see the whole picture. But it was done in the 15th century, a medieval time period, 1503 I think it was created just coming into the 16th century.
Banksy does stuff like this, but obviously that's not Banksy at the moment. Um, but um, there are huge amounts of artwork around that I enjoy looking at, yeah. But just the general whole feeling of Brick Lane, <coughs> the energy of Brick Lane and the different sort of types of guy that's here, it's sort of, um, you know, it's a mix of people and it's, it's a unique street. Brick Lane is a unique street to be in. And this is how I do my artwork. I work in the subconscious. So um, I work in like a dreamlike state. And um, when I'm working in the dreamlike state, I can be there for hours and hours and hours. And it's like a meditation. And um, when I'm creating, I'm creating deep in the meditational energy field, which, which means I can sort of let go of of everything in the conscious mind. Even pain seems to go away when I'm in the subconscious mind and when I'm, when I'm creating artwork, uh, all my pain seems to go away. And um, I could be in that state for hours and hours just creating artwork. And um, when I'm there, it's like, I'm not actually doing the artwork. It's almost like the energy of the universe is doing it and I'm just used as a vessel to create the work. And um, I can be there for hours and hours and hours. And uh, when I come out of that zone, back into the conscious mind, and I look at my own work and I think, Christ, who did this? Because you don't see where I work on up to 20 pictures at the same time. Um, you don't see the big picture of any of them, so it just happens um, automatically. So cre it's automatic creativity, which I go through. And um, this is uh, what all my artwork is about. I mean, when I'm creating the work, I go to a place where I was carefree. And when I'm working, it's like I'm... I'm a seven-year-old kid again in a swinging park, carefree days of just going from a slide to a swing, then a roundabout, enjoying the summer sun with nothing to worry about. And um, that's, that's where I am. And then I come out of that zone, I have to come back to reality. Well, how do I feel? Mm -hmm. um, differently to when I'm working on 10 or 20. Uh, because I work a lot faster when I'm working on 10 or 20. Because um, there's more pictures in a row. And, um, you know, when there's more pictures in a row, I've only got two here. So it's sort of, it's a bit slower but the thing is with um, collage I have to keep going back checking all these so that they're properly pressed out so you know you've got you've got to get the bubbles out you've got to get the creases as many of the creases out as you can so it's about going back to them and uh, ensuring that they're not going to come unstuck And then, um, uh, on this occasion, I haven't got enough pieces that I can just pick up and throw into it. So I'm having to cut some more. So are you in subconscious world now? Yeah.
Shaftesbury, a story of anguish and horror and, and mental illness and loss and I had nothing in my life worth living for. Um, it started with my parents uh, leaving me at the age of four. So I had no parents to tell me what anything meant, what love was, what um, holding was. Um, I never had that taught to me by my parents. And I th think that was a very important thing for parents to do, to be able to lo be loved by your mother and father um, is, is so important because they give you the, uh, they teach you how to be in life as a baby, as a child, as anything. Um, because I didn't have that, um, my life uh, became very disturbed and um, unhappy. Um, at the age of nine, I went to a boarding school. It was a horrible boarding school. Um, I was beaten um, by the masters. Uh, I was sexually abused by the masters. Um, and uh, although I managed to survive that, I was in a children's home where I was sexually abused by um, the, the other girls in the children's home. I was quite young at that time. Um, I was raped by two girls. Um, I didn't understand um, what was happening to me because I had no real knowledge of sex. Um, this led to me, uh, after boarding school, I went to uh, uh, prison. Uh, I stayed in prison for a while. I went on hunger strike um, until I almost died. And then, they, then I was transferred to a mental institution. Uh, at the age of 18, I was confined in a mental institution. Uh, I was eventually let out at the age of 21 um, and the horrors of the mental institution uh, was quite evil. There's a lot of nasty things that happened. Uh, patients used to slip their wrists in front of me and blood just sort of went everywhere. Nurses used to beat patients and all things like this. Um, then I was eventually let out into the wide world where I managed to keep down a job for a long time. Uh, I met several um, girls that um, I had a good relationship with, but because of my past relationships, it actually wasn't good relationships physically. Um, the love wasn't particularly good because I'd never learned how to love. Um, and all these things that I'd went through then. Um, then I, I found a girl and I had a child with, and I was a chef for 20 years. And um, then um, I managed to buy a home. I supported my partner and my children. And uh, I felt as if I'd actually made it. I'd actually... But yeah, there's been, there's been challenges in life which um, have been hard, all of which could have ended my life at any time. Um, but I managed to survive. And there's a lot of things that, you know, happen to all of us in life. 
and we just have to be strong, believe that things will change and things will get better. And I assure you, don't take your life. Don't go that, to that place where you feel that life is finished. Because because life isn't finished, and you you do be, through through what you've learnt, through the the depth of the darkest moments of your life, you do eventually come through, and success becomes a big thing, and anyone can find success after coming through the darkness, you will find success. And believe in yourself, love yourself, trust that uh, one day things will be great. And things are great. And so I'm glad I didn't take my own life because I've learned so much more, I've gained so much more, all of these things I would never have enjoyed if I've take, taken my own life. So I'm glad that I'm here today enjoying all the things that I'm enjoying today. I'm sharing artwork, I'm sharing experiences with everyone. And all I can say to everyone out there, whenever you feel down, there is light at the end of the tunnel and you will feel better and better as life goes on. Whew. It's a really emotional story. It is, yeah.